Your righteousness does not change based upon anything you do. If you leave here and you read your Bible all night long and pray for 13 hours straight, your righteousness does not increase. And if you only read your Bible for five minutes and maybe pray for 30 seconds, guess what? Your righteousness did not decrease. It stays the same because it is not based upon what you do. It is only based on your understanding that Christ is righteous. So therefore, he calls me righteous because he lives on the inside of me. So when the devil tries to come and condemn you, come on, you didn't pray last night. Come on, why are you lifting your hands? Come on, you don't belong in that worship team. You ain't spend no time with God. You say, devil, shut up. I will worship him. Come on now. You got to put that word on the enemy. And allow him to understand that Christ Jesus has made you righteous. Free yourself. Come on, everyone say, I got to free myself. See, that's what happens when you know the word of God. When you know your rights, when you don't know your rights, come on, the enemy can take advantage of you. Amen. He can beat you upside the head when you should be beating him upside the head. Because last time I read my Bible, the devil's been defeated when Jesus Christ died on the cross. Amen. And we are now living to enforce the cross. We are spiritual enforcers. You guys know what an enforcer is? You know, what, what do you call them policemen? What they're law enforcers. What are they doing? They're enforcing laws that have been decided in government. That's what we do. We enforce the spiritual laws that have been already established when Christ Jesus died on the cross. Death, hell, and the grave have been defeated. Guess what? Everywhere we go, Lord, right now, your will be done. Your kingdom come, Father. Your will be done right now in this place, in this neighborhood. We say right now, in Jesus' name, we take authority over evil spirits, demonic forces. We command right now the kingdom of God come, Lord, according to Matthew 6, Come on, what am I doing? I'm releasing the kingdom. I'm enforcing the victory that's already been won. See, either you're going to conform or you're going to transform. When you talk to people, when you go in places, are you conforming or are you transforming that place? Because there's only two places. Are you conforming unto what? The gossip and the lies and all the stuff that's going on. Or are you coming in and transforming the place? Oh, God is good. The Lord is good. You know, we have something in my family, my mother, my grandfather, all my uncles, when they answer their cell phone and their phones, they say, God bless. And when I was young, I was like, man, y'all don't know how to say hello. Why y'all answer the phone? God bless. And I realized they do that to offset any foolishness that's going to try to come and disrupt their peace. They shut it off from the jump. God bless. Oh, praise the Lord. And some people get caught off guard. I was like, huh? <laughs> See, sometimes I learn this in prayer. You have to, uh, what is this called? We, we have this term in the military, Pastor Conley. It's called, um, uh, it's called preemptive strikes. Preemptive strikes. What is a preemptive strike? So it's a military word, but it means that any time America senses or even smells a threat, they strike. They don't even allow the enemy to even get the weapons off. Can I tell you, you have to be like that in prayer. Sometimes you may not be in that moment, but I call it you store up prayers. Maybe for something that's going to happen next week. Maybe it's for something that's going to happen. No, Lord, right now, I pray for John. I pray for Judy. I pray for Alicia. I pray for all of them, Lord. And I say, in the name of Jesus, let your Holy Spirit grip their hearts and begin to move inside of them, Lord. Let them turn to Jesus. You storing up prayers. Lord, I thank you for my new house, Lord. I'm going to have Bible studies there, Lord. I'm going to invite people over. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for a new vehicle so I can give people rides to bring them to church. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for new territory, Lord, to expand the kingdom of God. You're just releasing it, putting it in the atmosphere by faith. See, some of us, we, we, we're stuck where we are because we have not released it in the atmosphere. Our faith has been killed. Hebrews says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. By faith, the elders obtained a good report. 
Do you know what that means? That means they develop such a good re reputation, they are dead, and we're still talking about them today. What is going to be said about your life when you are dead and going and transitioning to be with Jesus? Will people begin to connect a word with your name? When your name is spoken, what is the first word that comes to people's mind? What do people connect a characteristic with your name? Can I tell you, that's your reputation. When I was in Bible school, I would say certain people's names. Oh, yeah, that's that dude. He be in the gym all the time. Oh, yeah, that's that girl. She always walking on the sidewalk with, with a Slurpee in her hand. Yeah. It's connected to what you are doing and how you are governing your life. People are watching you. Everyone say, people are watching me. Watching and you got to let them know, yeah, keep on watching me because I'm doing what Christ wants me to do. Amen. I'm almost finished. Everyone say, God is after my heart. At the end of the day, you being here does not impress God. You driving in your car, putting your clothes on, and you sitting in this room does not impress the Father. But what impresses the Father is when you come and your heart is in the right place and you engage your spirit into what's happening before you. When people come and they have no hunger, they have no desire, they have no willingness, it makes frustration for us because here it is, we're laboring in love before the Father on behalf of the people, but yet we don't have any support or no one holding our arms or even desire to go to the next level. Can I tell you, that will kill a leader when there is no show forth effort and desire to move to any new place in your life. You know, one of my great mentors, he says, Justin, I do not disciple unteachable people. He will not engage in relationship with you. He said that is his number one qualification. You got to be teachable. If you're not, he don't fool with you. Why? Because he values his time. See, we don't value our time. We don't value the things that are precious in our life. We let people rob us of our time. We let people take advantage of our resources that we work hard for, and we just simply give them away. We, we don't value certain things that, that has been given to us. Come on, can I tell you, you need to be wise with what you're given. The Bible says, do not cast pearl before swine. Do not give what is precious just freely away when those who do not understand the value of what you're giving. Amen. Come on, that's why sometimes it's not always good to say, oh, Jesus loves you, brother. Because some of them, they don't even understand what that means. They don't even understand the value of Christ's love that was sacrificed on their behalf. Because possibly their interpretation of love is what they've experienced humanly. So everything you have, hallelujah, is valuable. Come on, everyone say, everything I have is valuable. Everything that God has given you is valuable. Your kids, valuable. Things that God has blessed you with, valuable. And how you steward that value will determine if you get more. Come on, I'll call it the, the, the gratefulness principle. You know what that is? You thank the Lord for what you have. It makes room for more. Some people, you never hear them say thank you. But can I say, Lord, listen, I thank you for my one-bedroom apartment. Lord, I thank you, Lord, for the little money I have. I thank you for my two pair of shoes. Lord, I thank you, Lord. I'm grateful. And guess what? Boom. God said, I need to bless you with a house. I need to, you're thanking him for this? You ain't seen nothing yet. But some of us, we want to wait until something happens. What they say, Pastor Colin, don't wait till the battle is over. Shout now. Put a praise on it now. Put a down payment on it now. And let God do it later. And watch what happens. He will manifest the promise that he has to you. Come on. If you have a promise that God has given you, you got to start praising God now. You have to start speaking it now. And over time, God begins to bring that thing closer to you because your faith is in constant operation. Hallelujah. 
You can't allow circumstances to kill your faith. You can't allow people to stop you from believing for what you know. Because in the kingdom of God, there are no problems. It's only promises. In the kingdom, there are no problems. He only has promises. And I want to tell you, you are a people of promise. And when you understand that you are people of promise, you understand you have an inheritance. And your inheritance is not of this world. Come on, this cannot dictate the value of the inheritance. Your surroundings, where you live, God doesn't even look at that. He looks at your faith. Do you believe him where you are? Do you believe him with what you have? Because when you start believing, can I tell you that faith will increase as you encounter the word. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing and hearing and hearing. And the more you hear, the more your faith begins to rise up. To where you say, man, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. To where you start talking and you say, hey, God's about to do this in my life. God's about to give me that whole block. God's about to make me principal. You start talking like this. And the next thing you know, months down the line, what done happened to you? She got it. Faith. Faith that moves mountains. Faith that speaks those things as though they're not as though they were. Yeah. Can I tell you, that's translated in when you begin to function in faith and speak under the oracles, futuristically, just faith in operation, it's almost like a hand comes out of your mouth and begins to form what you're saying. When was the last time, oh man, I feel this in the Holy Ghost, when was the last time that you had a spirit of faith come on you and you start speaking like a wild man or a wild woman and prophesying to empty walls and prophesying to your street and beginning to speak to your call and telling it to turn into something? I mean, when was the last time that the spirit of faith came on you where you were tired where you were and you wanted to move into somewhere different? I can remember a time. I was, I just moved here from Korea and I took on a job as an estate planner and we were dealing with trust, basically putting business owners and teaching them how to live out of trust, their financial instruments, their sophisticated financial instruments, basically to protect your assets and to, you know, kill your tax liability. So a lot of wealthy people, they don't like to pay taxes and you guys know that. So we were dealing with trust, and it was a new thing to me. I didn't really know, but I learned it and started moving in it, and it was, it, was, it was a commission job, all commission. And I said, well, Lord, I'm a presence guy. When I need something, I drop on my knees. Just get in the presence of God. Shut everything down and just get in the spirit and just worship the Lord until I feel a shift in my heart. So I was going to church, and all of a sudden, I started seeing things happen in the church, and through hearing people's uh, just comments about just um, not seeing breakthrough, things weren't happening in their life, and something rose in my spirit. How many know sometimes you can hear things, and it just shifts something on the inside of you yeah. to where you want to do something about it? Yeah. And I said, man, we're going to have a night of worship. Let's just get in the presence of God. That's how you solve the problem. Just get in the presence of God. Amen. So I called a, a gathering, a creative event. I talked to my pastor. He said, yeah, I created a flyer. You know, and of course, unfortunately, you know, people don't want to come to worship. If it's, some, if it's, if it's something else, they'll come. But worship and prayer is the least attended event in the church. So we had maybe like five or six people show up. But I invited my friends who were musicians and they're, they're my go-to-war people, right? It can be two people in the room. We're going to touch heaven. We're going to minister into the audience of one. And so we're worshiping. My friends are there. The presence of God is moving. And all of a sudden, the glory comes in the room. And then towards the end, I gave opportunity for people that I invited to speak. I said, hey, you know, Paul is here. A pastor's here. Do you have words you would like to say something? So my friend, Paul, he's an architect. 
he began to talk about, you know, just sharing, oh, man, this is a beautiful night, whatever. And as he's talking, the spirit of the Lord comes in the room, and it's a spirit of, of prosperity and provision. And I say, oh, I say, okay, he gave the microphone back. I say, there's a spirit in the room for people to get provision and prosperity. Lift your hands right now and just receive what the Father is releasing from heaven right now. People start lifting their hands, and we just started worshiping what we receive right now, what, what the Holy Spirit is doing. See, how many know sometimes God is just waiting for you to put up your sermon and you stop talking so he can move? Sometimes we think we got to talk and we got to build up. No, just let, speak the word and let the Holy Spirit take that word and manifest it in your midst. So people are lifting their hands. Within the next three, four days, people start getting new jobs. And then the next day, I get a phone call of a guy that I was trying to hurry up and get him to, to make the transaction. And long story short, I, he finally made the transaction, and it was a check for $25,000. Now, you know, I have no way of doing that. But when you get in the presence of God, see, when you bring your burdens before the Lord, See, when you get in the spirit and the presence of God, all limitations are taken away. The issue is you got to touch God because when you touch God, boom, limitations gone, problems gone. But when we want to do things in our own strength, we want to figure out, we want to control stuff. Uh-oh. We want to be in the driver's seat. We want to tell them what needs to be done. We want to see who needs to come and preach. We need to, we want to, we want to be in control of all of these things. How about you just come, be quiet, get in the presence of God, let the Holy Spirit come down and give you what you need. It's saying, Lord, I'm open to whatever you want. Here I am, Lord. I'm not limiting your ability to give me provision. I'm not limiting, Lord, whether I'm in a conference, whether I'm in a small room, whether I'm in my car, whether I'm in my bathroom. God, your presence can come where I am. I just need you to come. See, when you are hungry like that, it begins to attract heaven and the presence of God. And God begins to locate your situation. He begins to locate that thing that you've been worrying about. See, you have to learn how to surrender because the greatness of your power is in the measure of your surrender. When you surrender all, oh, God will begin to come because now he can be your father. Come on, just lift your hands in the room. I feel faith in the room. Lord, right now in the name of Jesus, God, we declare right now that you will locate situations in the room. Locate situations, Father. Locate every circumstance, Father, that is laid before you as a surrender and as a begin, O oh Lord, to commit everything into your hands. Right now, Lord, release in Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, we invite you now. We invite you now, Holy Spirit. You are in this place. And we thank you for the sovereignty of God that breaks through all barriers as we put our faith and believe the word that's coming forth. We connect our faith now, 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 in the name of Jesus. So in closing, in Revelation, we, we see... This letter is addressed to the Ephesians church. And Ephesians, the Ephesus church was like the mother church. Everyone say mother church. Mother church. But they were, there was a problem in Ephesus. They were doing good works, but they lost their love. Have you ever lost something in pursuing something else? Can I tell you there are people like that? They're pursuing something, but they're losing things on the back end. You got the promotion, you got the job, but you lost your kids. They were doing so many good things and doing them well, but they forgot to love. Their love capacity began to be drained because of the effort they were putting. You know, even your energy and how you allocate your energy is a big deal. Can I tell you, when you step in people's presence, you feel their energy. Some people in a good mood, some people in a, in a sad mood. 
you know? And so for me, I always make sure my energy is in the right place. Because if not, you can have some people that may be involved in all kind of foolishness. And they come in your presence or they come around you. And sometimes you find yourself being affected. Here it is, you in a good mood. It's kind of like the person that calls you and all the time they want to bring your spirit down. Hey, John, how you doing? You in a good mood? Hey. Well, you know, I'm going through, man. You know, I need you to pray for me. Again, I thought we did this last week. Yeah, I need you to pray for me. I mean, knowing how to recalibrate and allowing your energy to always be in the space to where say, man, no, God's going to work it out. You know, you can tell a person of faith after talking with them for five minutes. God's going to work it out. It's, it's going to happen. God's going to do something. So they were pursuing something, but they lost the love that God put in their heart. What is our, our identification badge as a believer? Our identification badge as a believer. Is it our miracles? Is it power? Power. You know, we love to talk about power. Is it the power of God? No. The Bible says you shall know my disciples by the love they have for one another. That's how we convince the world because the world is a reflection of the church. The world is jacked up because the church is jacked up. And when we don't love one another, how can you say you love God and you don't love your sister sitting right next to you? Amen. You come to church, you mean face, you never smile, you never got nothing good to say. Yeah. We always got to walk on eggshells around you. That's the devil. Yeah. Right. Come to the altar, play that for the Lord, let the pastor pray for you or something. Yeah. But how can it be that we are in a space and we truly say our heart is connected vertically, but horizontally there is no evidence. There's no evidence in our love. That is the true essence of the church. Amen. And it's unfortunate that we as a church, we don't allow people to get stuff off of their chest in a safe place. Amen. Because truth of the matter is, some of us need counseling. Amen. Some of us, we want to spiritualize everything, but really we need to talk some things out. Because you can't praise break everything out. You can't deal with everything. Just put a praise on it. No, I ain't putting no praise on it. And I go back home, I'm still broke, still depressed, still going through. You have to deal with the issue. Come on, everyone say, I got to deal with it. Come on, you got to deal with that lust. You got to deal with that anger. You got to deal with that grief. You got to deal with, with, with the issue and the war happening between your members. And sometimes the devil don't even have to work because we give in to our flesh. It's called self-sabotage. We help the enemy because of our inability to yield to the spirit and allow the spirit to lead us according to Romans 8. Be led by the spirit. Commune with the spirit. When you're in your car, when you're in your house, you should be communing with the spirit. Turn off Netflix sometimes. Turn off Facebook sometimes. Turn off all of this, this stuff that steals you of your time. That's time you could be spending time with the Holy Ghost. Maybe he want to give you a million dollar idea. But you're not in a space to where if he spoke, you wouldn't even know what, what, what just happened. You know, me personally, I keep worship music on all the time. My team back in Dallas, sometimes they, they make fun of me because I always have this instrument music, music playing all the time. Amen. Because what I'm doing, I'm abiding in the place. I refuse to come down. I done leveled up. I ain't leveling down. Come on, when you eat a good steak, it's hard to go back to spam and ramen noodles. When you experience real counter and dimensions in God, you don't want to go back to the fluff. You don't want to go back to, to, to the, to the kiddie pool. Listen, I, I, I need you to level. I need, I need some more. And what happened? God begins to answer that because the Bible says, blessed are those who thirst and hunger after righteousness. What's going to happen? They shall be filled. If you're not hungry, God is not obliged to fill you with anything. You have to come hungry. You have to come thirsty. 
And when you do, beloved, what happens, God meets you at your point of your need. And whatever you need to do to get to that place, you have to discipline yourself in doing that. It may require shutting people out, deleting some numbers out of your phone, changing some of your lifestyle practices. Listen, it's worth it. It's worth it. One moment in the presence of God will change your life forever. If you got to fast 40 days and you hit that place, my God, it was worth it. God will never disappoint your, your desire in pursuit of him because there's no cap in the kingdom. Come on, you, you're reading your Bible too much. Come on, slow down. One verse a day. You're praying too much. No. You can have as much of God as you desire. And when you hunger, oh, man, this is what's going to allow you to move into higher dimensions. Come on, everyone say, I will be hungry. So they lost their love for the Lord. They lost this love and passion as they were doing, I call it, church work. Everyone say church work. Come on, you can be working for God and not working with God. How many people in churches you've been to where you went there and the greeter was just angry for no reason? You know, them churches that got the usher and they got the uniform and everything. Nah, sit right here. You got to sit right here. I want to What? I want to sit over there. Nah, you, come on this side. It's like, Lord Jesus, I need deliverance now because I don't want to walk out this service. Working for God. They're not working with God. They done scared. That could have been somebody that was on drugs that need deliverance. And you just scared them away because you want them to sit in the section that they don't want to sit in. When we serve in the house of God, we need to have the spirit of love. Come on, God is not going to send anybody to you if you're going to scare them away. Yeah. And then we wonder why nobody want to come to our church. Yeah. Praise God. Yeah. They had hard patience. They patience, endurance. They were examining false prophets. I mean, false apostles, they had a spirit of discernment that they were able to 